Oh, here you go. Okay. Uh, as Joe was saying, we did have a workshop uh, a few months ago, and I'll go over and I'll explain a little bit why DHS is involved in this and why science and technology is involved in this. Okay, probably wondering, okay, what does DHS have to do with hurricanes? Well, here's some of our, our mission statements that we have. I sort of highlighted in blue, probably the one area that sort of covers our hurricane. We're looking for you know, responding to threats and hazards to the nation. It doesn't necessarily have to be hazards or threats by terrorists but by environmental conditions, maybe tornadoes, hurricanes, floods, whatever. And that's why we are involved in here. And we have our undersecretary, Jay Cohen, who's very proactive in, in trying to, to look at not only the, the terrorist threats, but also at the environmental threats. <coughs> and one time, it was last September, we are having a meeting, and he was talking, and he gets his epiphany. He's very soft, and he said, you know, we need to uh, do something about controlling hurricanes. He looked at me because some of the other programs I have are involved with hurricane storm surge. And he says, you know, we need to put a symposium together. And because he thinks pretty big. And I'm going, well, I don't think we need a symposium. Let's, let's sort of start small. And so I quickly uh, got smart on hurricanes and, and uh, tried to locate uh, all the, the main players in, in doing the hurricane modification research. And... Uh, Let's see if I have it here next. Oh. And so I came up with a list of around 20 people, or about 18 people. Uh, some of the the, uh, the real thinkers, the real leaders in hurricane modification, hurricane research. Uh, and it was, uh, it was an honor for me to be participating in that. And the comment I made uh, when I started off the workshop was that I was humbled by the giants in the room. And again, I look at it this way here also, because I don't have a meteorological background. So I'm sort of humbled by by what you are trying to do with weather modification and what we're trying to do with hurricane modification. And the statement here is what the undersecretary is sort of focusing at. You know, he's looking at trying to see if there's a possibility of minimizing the forces, the effect of a hurricane. We're not so much looking at trying to stop a hurricane. We're not looking at trying to change the track of a hurricane. There's other implications involved in doing that. I think what we're trying to do is find some way of reducing the forces that cause the damage. Uh, as you're well aware, more and more people are moving to the coast. Uh, within 200 miles of the coast, you have a huge percentage of the population in the United States. Uh, and despite being in Colorado, you would think that, but it really is a large portion of the population is around the coast. And as the hurricanes, the, the number of hurricanes may not be increasing, but I think the intensity of hurricanes are increasing. And this intensity is causing a lot more damage and as more infrastructure is built on the coast and more more homes and buildings are built because there's a number of issues that we need to think about. So one of the things we're looking at trying to modify, I do have track, speed, winds, and rain up there, but mainly we're just looking at the, um, the force of it, which may include the speed and the rain. So the focus of the workshop, kind of sat down a little bit and figured out, okay, what do we want to accomplish on this workshop? And this is looking at this with a DHS focus now, not a other kind of focus, a DHS focus. So one of the things we want to do is to see if there's any other hurricane uh, theories out there to mitigate hurricanes, anything out there that we may want to pursue further to do additional research. The second thing is to better, to have a better understanding of the hurricane physical processes. Uh, the one thing I found out is that even though we've been looking at hurricanes for many years, I don't think we have the depth of knowledge uh, of what really starts these things and what controls them in enough detail to really come up with a, a solution that's going to be viable and that's going to work. So I think we need to do maybe further research to make that happen. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, again, focus on DHS specific concerns. And you know, our, our thinking is that uh, we want to prevent people from being killed. We want to prevent uh, property damage, business jam damage, and anything that's going to affect the economy of the country. Um, what's up? The other thing we're looking at too, we may have a solution, but it may be too expensive. And it may not be uh, the right thing to do because the logistics uh, of, of implementing that solution just will not work. So there may be some solutions out there that in theory work very well, but practicality it doesn't. So you have to be aware of that, and that's one of the things we're looking at. And the final output from the workshop was, okay, what do we do next? What's the, how best to move forward? We'll talk about that in a second. Of course, for those who don't know, that's uh, that picture in the upper right-hand corner. You know what that is? That's part. 
And one of the things I found out, this is off the top of the one of the things I found out during my research, I ended up with two stacks of data. One stack of data came from reputable organizations, academia, National Academies of Science, and so forth. The other side came from these maybe not so reputable groups that were on the fringes and supported by very secular groups. And they had this uh, theory that Russia and the United States had the capability of controlling weather. Our means of doing it was through this system called HART. So that was, uh, that was interesting. One of the things that we discussed during the focus during the, of, of the workshop, uh, as you're probably well aware, Project Storm Fury that Joe was talking about, that ended in 1983. And that was the, the last of the federal funding of any hurricane mitigation, modification research done in this country. Uh, the other two projects happened before Storm Fury, but the, the basic output of all three of these, these programs was that there probably wasn't enough information or data to justify going any further with it. Now that political considerations were at hand and you know, which brings in a lot of other things. At the, at the workshop itself, this is a list of all the participants. I know it's kind of small, but I do have a, uh, a copy of the report we put together. It was only a day and a half workshop. So this was done pretty much on the cheap. So uh, uh, we did the best we could and put this report together. And these names are in the report. But here's a list of all the, all the, um, the masters in the field that were there. Again, you probably recognize most of those names. Just trying in the field. It was a pleasure working with them. And to make this even interesting, more interesting, here's a picture of them. Of course, this, uh, you probably think this is a high school picture, but it's not. Uh, this is just the group that was there. Looks like my 60th anniversary uh, picture that I went to up last Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> No, 60th high school reunion. No, I'm, no excuse me. And this was sort of the agenda that we had. Again, inside the, the report that I have there, so I don't want to go into detail, but here's some of the topics that we covered, and those are some of the people who presented at the workshop itself. And uh, I'll wait to see your lips stop moving on the next one. Okay, and there's the rest. There's only a day and a half. Okay, so how about the output of what we're trying to accomplish? Well, I think what we decided to do was, I think everyone agreed and concurred that the next thing to do was we needed to figure out what research needed to be done. We needed some more research. So what research do we need to do? Uh, if we happen to, to find something that seems uh, it's very possible and plausible, then we can probably you know, try and invest some additional funding and maybe take it to the next step. I think for this first step is we're going to try to do some basic research. I'm sure you're thinking the next question, when are we going to do this? Well, we're negotiating some funding from DHS to start this this year. If we can start this this year, and, and that, that's, that's pretty good. Not this year, the next year in 09. So that's, uh, that's a good sign. What I'm still thinking is how best to approach this is uh, the last paragraph. I'm still kind of kicking that around on, on what we should do. Um, there's a lot of interest in this uh, from a lot of different areas, not only in the country but the world. And I'm you know, trying to get get the best people to uh, put together the best research. Of course, this is government for the least amount of cost. And uh, I think we're going out with an RFI and then going out with an RFP afterwards may work. But I'm still thinking that. Not quite clear on that. This was a sort of a, a, a rough, rough order of magnitude of our program and approach that that I kind of put together, or I should say we sort of put together, and I passed it around, and I had it divided up into three tasks. Uh, you can see on, on the, uh, the board with the R. Again, that's, again, you'll find that in the report, so it may be a lot easier to read. Um, those, those figures may be too high, may be too low, but I think they're fairly close. Uh, the total cost, including flights, are $64 million over a uh, three-year period, a uh, three-, four-year period. Uh, so that's something I'm looking at. I'm not quite sure that's what we should do, but again, that's just a, uh, a rough guess on something. And I just want to sort of pick your interest in this. Uh, please, if you have any questions, any suggestions, any uh, uh, other issues about DHS, science and technology that I can answer legally, I'll be more than happy to do that. Okay. Thank you.
okay, we'll proceed with the panel. And um, I'm going to ask our senior member, Professor William Gray from uh, Professor Emeritus, who called.